Okay, so right in the middle of filming this, my memory said it was full. Kind of like me. <laughs> so now I gotta I gotta reboot everything and now my laptop has fainted. <laughs> Don't you hate that when you're working all of a sudden all of a sudden it just goes, well, you know, I'm tired of doing this now and it quits. I'm like look. I don't quit, you don't get to quit. In between all these layers it says to dry, I did hit it with the heat gun. And then I went off and unloaded the dishwasher, took a shower, got dressed, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so now it's, you know, it's good. Now let's see, I'm going to go on to the next part. It says to take the brush and add some textures with the edge of your brush. So... In the little tutorial, it just shows them making little dabs. I'm not sure I understand what that's for, but that's what it shows, so I'm going to do it. So I'm going to use number, I think, 04, because that looks like, oh, it's still wet in there. All right, fabulous. So, one, two, three, and, and in the picture, he has three. And I'm just going to do like what he has in his um, tutorial. One, two, three. One, two, three. I don't like the way it looks, but I'm hoping that this will turn into something more wonderful. Because oranges don't really look like that. They also don't have pencil in them either. <laughs> All right, now what does it say? Talks about the poundage of paper. The colors of Daniel Smith he used were Hansa Yellow Deep, or Hansa, H A N S A, and uh, what else? Is it? Well, he and transparent. I'm going to massacre. It's P Y R R O L. Is it pyrrole orange? And then he has a link where he recommends other colors and things like that. So I would follow his link and read his stuff. It's very interesting. Um, I mix orange and yellow paint together. For the next paint of individual segments with the orange color, I mix... I may need a mix of orange and yellow paint for this, but more on the orange bias. Don't be scared to mix a puddle of fairly strong paint. The idea to paint strong, rich colors is to keep in mind that watercolor paints always dry lighter than the with the appear. Oh yeah, good thing. <laughs> the aim is to get some variation in the color of the triangle segment. So while paint is still damp, load your brush with yellow and dab some yellow pigment into the white. This technique is called charging in. All right, so let's give it a shot. So we have this, and he said take a palette and mix the orange. So I'm using, oh, yeah, that's number 19. Oh, it looks like 41, doesn't it? Number 19. So I'll use a little bit of number 19. And did 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 what did he say to do? Load up the brush with yellow. Okay, so let me use the uh, bright yellow 05. Bright yellow 05. Oh, well, that definitely changed the color there. And then what what do you do? to create a small gradient color within the segment, changing the orange to yellow-orange. I don't know if that's what he's talking about. Let's water it down some more, because I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I guess I need to look up that definition of what charging in is. That looks too orange to me, so let's put some more yellow in there. because you already have some orange from the little dabs he made you use. I really don't like how orange this is, so let me 
kind of dab that out. I'm not crazy about this. Although it, well, maybe it'll come around. I don't know. So let's dibble a little here and then a little there and see what we get. Well, there went my white space. I'm sorry, the dog is cleaning herself behind me, so all I hear in my head is the hum of the laptop on the desk and the dog cleaning herself. <laughs> all right, holding the brush at the final stage. Now return to the edge of the orange and paint an orange line on the outer edge. Make this outer circle thinner so that you can get the yellow inner circle still showing. What yellow inner circle? I missed something? <laughs> I must have. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay, so now this part says to, uh, the final touch, add some texture to the segments. Make sure the paint is dry before doing this. Okay, well then, we're still wet. Add successive layers of paint this way. Watercolor paint technique known as glazing. Oh, so you're gonna dab three lines of color, three, dab three lines of color to the edge of each triangular segment. Okay. Well, let me get number five on here because I did use number five. I think I'm gonna try this on my own without his instructions. All right, so let me flip this up and take a look. Oh, oh, I see what he's doing. Okay, so this has to be dry. Let me hit this with the dryer real quick. Okay, I see what he's doing. He's taking the brush and he's dipping it in paint, in different shades of paint. I'm going to mix some of this on here to make it a little darker, give it a little more Variation of colors. So let's try the number 19, which is kind of a real orangey orange. All right, so what he's doing, he's taking the brush and he's dabbing it to mimic, oh, that's too dark, to mimic um, pulp. Oh, it does give it texture. Son of a gun, look at that. All righty then, let's go in. You see this one right here? It's got... You see how it's got texture to it? Oh, that's wackadoo. Okay. I kind of like that. All right, let's see if we can... All right, that's not... That's too dark. I think he is better at it with a brush. I'm better at it with a wet paper towel. <laughs> okay, let's give this a shot. I don't know. It's supposed to give the appearance of pulp. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can't see what I'm doing, can you? Well, duh. There we go. All right, so. I guess you kind of smack your brush on it, and then when it dries, it dries in making it look like pulp. I don't know. I'm not sure I understand this. Well, I definitely have different shades of color in here. Lord knows I have enough on there. All right, let's try this other guy here. All 
right, I don't like the white space in between the layers. It's just too white for me, and he does not have that much white in there. He has little specks all over his thing here. I don't know. I might have ruined it by putting all these little specks in there. <laughs> e. Let me see what this does. I don't know. Seems a bit odd to me. Isn't it easier if you just splatter? <laughs> I don't understand the point of putting all those little things in there. All right, so it says to do the outer edge in a really dark orange. Yeah, let's see, which one is the darkest? Would it be number 14? Number 14. I don't know if I really want to do that or not. Well, you know, if I don't do it, I'm never going to learn. So number 14? No, that's 19. Mm -mm. Yeah, 19. That was 41. <laughs> I had it upside down. Number 41. Nope. Hmm. I have the colors all mixed up. That's 19, citrus, 04, 43, uh, that's not 41, I think that's 19 again, is that 19 again? Might be the same thing, it's not 41, alright, well I'll fix that later. Alright, so I need, uh, don't put that in my water glass, I need to move this, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> I didn't buy orange juice from the grocery store the other day. So, uh, all right, so this is number 32. Oh, hey, not so bad, huh? I really do need a much thinner brush to do this with, though. I don't think this is the proper brush to be doing this with. And I'm not sure I have anything that's thinner. You know, this is way more complicated than what I signed up for. I never intended for this to be so labor intensive. Trying to keep in mind what it says in there. The color always dries lighter. And I'm hoping it does. Because <laughs> this looks really dark. Okay. I think that's it. It's too... I, I don't like how all that white space is. So I'm going to see if I can't tone it down a little bit. What that would be or how that would be, I'm not exactly sure. Get this labeled, number 32. I really, I don't want to smear in between here. Because his really is white. So maybe I'll do the little, little dots like what he's got. Which helps to take the eye away from how white it is. Exactly. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. That's interesting. Not what his looks like. But his looks really good. He looks. His picture looks like he has pulp in his orange. That's very interesting. All right, so let's try one where I don't draw the segments. And then this time I better start out with a very light color. So let's do the 04.
Wow, that's a nice circle. I've never done that before. Woo! That's, wow! <laughs> All right, and then we have to do the insides. So let's do the citrus, which is, nah, yeah, this one, which is more yellow than it is orange. So let me take some yellow. You see this? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm scrunched in a very small space. Take some yellow, and I'll mix some of the 04 with it. All right, let's see how this goes. Too much paint. And I should have drawn it on there. <laughs> that does not look good. Okay, well, we can spread this around a little bit. And we'll just say that was a design element I intended the whole time. Not really. So sadly, He said something about he had a template or a template that he used to make his segments. I'm trying to freehand. Maybe not the best idea ever. I should put these up higher so I have less white space. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, these guys are too scrunched together here. There we go. We have one less of them, and it'll be much better. All right, so I guess now we start with the very light color first. I understand from talking to other people, you should start with the lightest color first, and then you can add more later. How's that? It's sort of like when you salt something, you salt a little bit at a time and taste it and taste it. Because once you over salt, it's over. Although I hear that if you put a raw potato in something that it helps to soak up the salt. I've never tried that, but I heard that's what you can do. All right, so I need more water. This is too much. There we go. Too much color. Actually, I really didn't need to load my brush because I have all this other stuff in the background. So just, I guess, just kind of get some water and spread it around, huh? Yep, that'll do it. There you go. All right, now what was the other part I had to do next? You know, I can't remember. Leave some white highlights. All righty then. <laughs> Eek. I'm trying to add some of this number 19. Ooh, that's entirely too much. You know, I think that this is up to you to what you think is aesthetically pleasing to your eyes. 
And if it's realistic, fine. If it's not, as long as people get a general idea of what it is you're painting, I'm supposing that's good enough. What do you guys think? If it kind of looks like a rose and you perceive it to be a rose, then by golly, it's a rose. Just so you know, I don't see a rose here. <laughs> Not even close. Okay, well this needs to kind of hide those pencil marks a little bit. Although, I'm not going to hide them, I don't think. Let's see. And then what am I supposed to do after this? Charge with damp paint and dabs of yellow. Okay, dabs of yellow. What did I use on this before? Oh, five. And it doesn't even show up. Let me wipe the orange off of here. Yeah, I just like last time, I don't see the yellow. I think maybe I saturated the orange a little too much. And the yellow, even though it's a very strong yellow, I don't think that the yellow is going to show up. Yeah, it's, it's barely happening. And I'm not even really using a wet brush. I've tried to dry it off and it's just not, it's just a dab it. I'm dabbing. Dabba dabba do, baby. All right. Well, now what's the next part? I can't remember. Paint a thin line of orange. Uh, I think I've already done that. <laughs> Maybe I should take some of it off. Too late. All right, so then, um... You know, not every orange is orange on the outside. So I'm thinking I might let a little green. And mix it with a little orange to kind of unorange it, tone it down a bit. I need to make this more wet. Wow. That really is green. Okay, probably wasn't the smartest thing I ever did. together. Well, definitely made the rind thinner. We're not so perfect of a circle. Nice. Hmm. Now it just looks like dirty water. <laughs> Alrighty then. I think maybe we should dry this. Okay, let's see what else we can do with this says to do the orange. So the darkest orange that I have is probably number 19. So 
so, oh, I'm so scared to do this. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And what does he say do? I gotta go back up here and read it. I'm sorry, I my I have terrible memory. Alright, so he says to kind of bleed it off into here. Hmm, I guess you really do need that white in there. All right, so I guess what I'll do next is around the edge. Very carefully, unlike the rest of it. a little too dark. This rate it could be called a blood orange because I have sweat blood all over it. Let's get this a little lighter. Okay, let's water this just a little bit so it's not I don't know. Seems a bit odd to me. I might have to take a white pen after this dries and kind of go back in those spaces and um, see what I can do about it, about fixing it. That's the green that I <laughs> messed it up with. No number. No number. There you go. All right, so I think I have... <laughs> piddled around with this enough <laughs> that I am maybe rethinking what I'm doing. Let's make splashes on it. That'll make me feel better. Yeah, that'll do it. Let's make splashes of 50,000 colors that are left over. And get it all over the water glass, the dusk. Eh, not bad for an amateur. All right, I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to take a white, well, I say that. Here, take one of these white pens and kind of go in the middle a little bit and see if I can't brighten it up. Maybe go around a little bit on the outside edges to make it more look like that, which I didn't think worked until I saw that. <laughs> All right, guys, this is enough torture for today. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. Bye.